Hi everybody, welcome to today's lecture. My name is Divna, I prepare to talk today about inter-specific competition and this is proceeding of what we started in the previous presentation. So just to recapitulate, in the previous presentation, the one before this today, we talked about intra-specific competition. So in few lines how it looks like, it affects population density, and then individuals are usually smaller and having fewer babies of usually lower quality, which further influences the mortality rate, which gets higher. So, obviously, you remember the concept of ecosystem, which means that every species on Earth uh, has to coexist with many others around them. And since resources are most usually limited, inter-specific competition appears and this is what we are going to talk about today. Okay, so inter-specific competition refers to the competition between two or more species for some limited resources. This limiting resource can be like food or nutrients and space, nesting sites and so on. So anything for which demand is greater than supply and this is what we talked about in a previous presentation. When one species is a better competitor, interspecific competition negatively influences the other species with rates, which in turn affects the population dynamics of, of the competitor. And this is the story of uh, predation, parasitism and so on, those types of, of uh, species interactions we, we mentioned them earlier before. Interspecific um, competition can be done in two ways, so through um, exploitation or interference and both of these can be done in, in six levels written on the slide so uh, consumption competition occurs when individuals of one species inhibits individuals of another by consuming a shared resource such as the, the competition among various animals for example for acorns or so on then we have preemptive competition which occurs primarily among sessile organisms such as barnacles and where the occupation by one individual precludes the establishment or occupation but by others. Overgrowth competition occurs when one organism literally uh, grows over another so it can be with or without the physical contact and and this, uh, this affects the species by inhibiting the access to some essential resources and a nice example of it is um, is the access to light which um, is determined by the interactions of taller plants with which shade the ones that live below them and, and reducing the available light for them. And in the chemical reactions, the chemical growth inhibitors or toxins, um, they are released an individual in that way inhibit or kill the other species. Example for that is allelopathy in plants, uh, in which case the chemicals produced by some plants inhibit the germination or an establishment of other species. And uh, so this is a, a chemical reaction example. Uh, then we have a territorial consumption result, which results from the behavior exclusion of others from a specific space that is defined as the, the territory, of course that's why it's called territorial. And then we have as a last one the encounter competition, which results when non-territorial meetings between individuals negatively affect one or, or both participants in this interaction. So, for example, the various species of scavengers fight over the this carcasses of dead animals. Um, and this provides an example for this kind of, of encounter uh, competition uh, example with a, with a lion and, and zebra and vultures and so on. Uh, competitive interaction between organisms can have a great deal of influence on, on species evolution and this is really something really important to, to remember. So it can affect uh, the structure of communities, for example, which species coexist, which, which don't, the relative size, abundance, and so on. And, and then and it can also or, uh, affect the distribution of species, so uh, where certain species occur, when where they cannot, and so on. So 
the, the modeling these interactions provides a, a really useful framework for prediction outcomes and further in, a, in a species protection and um, developing plans and, and protecting uh, areas and species. And this is where the statistics in the ecology play this huge role. So quantifying basically the, the science. So as, as for the outcomes of, of their specific competition, uh, there are four possible outcomes. Um, the story starts in the early 20th century in, where when two now famous mathematicians, one, one was um, American and the other was uh, from Italy, and the first one was called Lotka and the, the Italian was Voltaire. Further, they will develop now something that's called Lotka Voltaire um, law, and it says that uh, that these these two mathematicians describe the relationship between two species uh, using the same resource. So what basically they did is they took the the equation for population growth, the one we we talked uh, in a previous presentation. I hope you remember. And what they did is they uh, they f they included two different species in the equation, so they fit. So this equation would work in the prediction of competition between uh, two or, or more different species, and they ended up with something that looks like this. So here is a nice graph representing the, the competition. So as you can see, the, the the time and the number of individuals of different species, how it looks like in, in a space. Uh, quoting a uh, real life, so what statistics does and how it looks on on a field. About the equation, of course, we have two species here, so species one and species two, and there is um, a combination of two of two equations to describe next. Uh, so for the n, for the first species, we have a um, density of a number of species is equal to alpha n2 which is the population size of species 2 the n2 and alpha is the competition coefficient uh, that actually quantify as the per capita effect of species 2 and species 1 similarly for the, the species 2 here so the species 2 here it's Beta, beta N2, uh, where beta is the per capita competition coefficient, coefficients that quantifies the, the per capita effect on the species 1 on species 2. This competition coefficient can be taught as a, as a factor for converting an individual of one species into the equivalent number of individuals of the competing species. So this how the interactions of two species can be, or as many as we need, is described in an in, in equation, and then further calculations uh, in a matter of species dynamics can be calculated out of this. So dependent on the combination of values for the, the, the case, or carrying capacity, and for alpha and beta, the, the lotka voltaire equation predicts uh, four different outcomes that, that are possible to, to happen. Um, this is the story of four different outcomes possible to calculate out of their um, their equation. So here it's represented uh, the model of uh, Lotka Voltaire for competition between two species. Here in, in, in each graph, the, the x axis is uh, representing the population size of species 1, and the y axis uh, represents the population size of a species. So, firstly, we'll talk about this case, A B scenario. So, in the, in the shaded area, here green is the species 1, and orange can be considered a species 2. So, in the zero isocline for each species is defined as the combination of, of N1 and N2 for which the dn 
divided with d2 is equal to zero, so basically the, the population population growth is equal to to zero. So basically, what it says that you, there is a carrying capacity point, and is a clean. So everything below it, there it has a positive positive uh, growth rate in in both cases, and everything above that line, this area. For both species has a negative growth rate for for um, both populations until they reach the, the carrying capacity um, uh, level at which turns things back to normal or where population is again stable and has a zero growth rate or or at least a positive one uh, the CD um, Example. So here they're representing basically two two opposite scenarios. So in the first scenario, the the first species is always better than the second species, leading to the extinction of the second one. And how this happens? So um, this is the carrying capacity of a second species, and this is the carrying capacity of first species. So here, so basically, as we learned, the the species do not exist or has fall. A negative uh, growth rate be above the carrying capacity level so when the species 2 goes above its carrying capacity level here the, their growth rate will decline while at the, in the same area the the carrying capacity of a second of uh, the first species is still not reached so this first species has a positive growth rate while the the second species is in a negative growth rate which means that the first species will win and the second will extinct this is the same story just with the opposite outcome so the carrying capacity of a first species is is here and then the carrying capacity of a second species is here which means that first species doesn't exist behind its carrying capacity here so here we have a fall of uh, growth rate of a first species, but since the the, sec uh, the first species, since the second species still didn't reach its carrying capacity, it continues to develop uh, at the same time while the, the first species uh, growth rate is falling. So this means that the carrying capacity of second species is higher, allowing it to develop beyond the carrying capacity of the first species, meaning that the first species will extinct and that the second will win. And this is the story about coexistence or competition that can go either way. In, in, in both uh, scenarios, none of the species is extremely influential like in the previous two species where one will lead to the extinction of the other. Um, in here, there is this so-called unstable equilibrium, which means that it's basically like um, scale. Always one side can prevail. So this is the K1 is the stable for the carrying capacity for the first. This is the second here. Uh, so at any moment it can switch to another scenario where one species can uh, can be more influential than another. Basically. The C scenario, the isoclean crosses, and then basically each species inhibits the growth of the other more than its own growth. And what happens is usually that a more abundant species often wins. And then in the F scenario, each species inhibits the growth of its own population more than uh, that of the other uh, by interspecific competition. And in this scenario, the, the species usually coexist. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. We'll continue this story in the next presentation. We're going to talk about Gauss principle of exclusion and so on. Stay tuned. Bye.